afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome on in to the Brass Ring Media Podcast for Thursday, March 28th, 2024. Our second of two flagship shows throughout the week. I'm Zach Haydorn. That is Tyler Sage. So pumped to be here. Tyler, what's up, man? Hey, uh, you know, getting better. My voice is at a brisk 65%, I would say. So I'm excited to talk some wrestling. Um I think I know what's up with Mercedes, per your title. You do? I'm curious what you, what you have to say on that. Yeah. <laughs> well, yeah. I mean, so as you guys know, this is usually our AW heavy show, and we'll probably keep it that way um, today for sure, given the uh, batch of topics we have on hand. But the first one, like Tyler said, what's up with Mercedes Monet, man? I mean... <laughs> So are you, I guess, what is your, is she not being utilized correctly to you? Is she, is her character strange and kind of off-putting? Um, I think both those are fair points. I just don't know where you want to start and tackle this thing. Well, it's just, I'm just, I'm just flummoxed. I mean, it's just one of those things where, first of all, I think, yes, she's being used poorly at this point in time, but that's not even where I want to start. You know, we can definitely get get there for sure but i was going to start with like how bored she looked on commentary last night like it's like dude like if if you're a guest commentator you had those announcers like like trying everything they could scratching and clawing and trying to pry any bit of analysis or uh or 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 words out of out of Mercedes Monet and she just was not having it like she just she would laugh and she'd you know you know uh kind of like be like oh my god at big moves but I mean she didn't sound like she knew the wrestlers she was even watching it sounded like she showed up and they're like hey you're gonna be the commentator on this match like go out there and 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 that's it and I'm just like man like she's a bad she, she's not known for her talking anyway as we all know mm-hmm. like promos have never been her strong suit and she's out there not doing anything. And I think it made her look bad. I think it made her like mission to kind of like elevate the women's division and this global revolution as she talked about look bad because she didn't even seem like she knew who the heck she was watching. So I thought it was just a, a really bad night for her on that front. So why don't you take, take that first and then we'll talk about how she's being used in, in a second here. Yeah, I mean, first, I'm going to start positive on this because, like, I I guess it's more baseline on what I'm expecting for Mercedes, right, is to be, I think, at, at the high end is, like, a good in, in-ring worker and storytelling secondary and then talking third, right, of, of that capacity. So putting her on commentary seems like an unforced error by... AEW to me, um, because that's probably the, her weakest point in in her, in her bag of skills. But I did like that. Essentially, this show Dynamite was structured on Will Ospreay at the top in the show, Mercedes, what she's doing, what she's doing with the women's division in like a granular aspect to bridge the first to second hour, in closing with Swerve, right. I think those are three stars that you're relying on building your show around and on a structure that was good. Also, what I think has worked with Mercedes is, uh, you know, I don't, I think all four of the women in the match last night have shown the propensity to botch, to be slow in the ring, to not put good quality matches forward. And I actually like the match quite a bit. And it seemed like all of them were like, Wrestling for whoever wrestled the best here might may, may gets the first crack at Mercedes in a in a big payday at a pay per view or something like that because they were all working their asses off and so I don't know if that has helped as well but yes I mean I'm not going to argue that I mean Mercedes was barely there you know mentally physically spiritually whatever right and to kind of set up at the end like a stare down with um. <clears throat> With Julia Hart, which is like, okay, so is Willow going to lose and then Mercedes going to go against Julia Hart? Is she going to help Willow in this pay-per-view? Is she not going to have a pay-per-view match at Dynasty? Um, Doesn't seem like it. All, yeah, so all of that is weird. I know she's fully cleared, right? 
Because that's like what this seems like at this point is like that's the case there. So, yes, a, a non entity on commentary that's been a, a trend in AEW, right? Like, a, a you know, who's been on there that's helped themselves, right? I mean, I think Ricky's pretty I mean, good on commentary, like when he's talking anti the guy he's going against, or. You know, it's just like it's not been a tried and true way to get people over. I think there's a reason that, you know, I know WWE still does it, but how often do they do it? Like, it's not like a very good strategy in modern wrestling to have someone on commentary, I think. So it was a misuse of her. She didn't add anything to it. I'm not going to disagree with you there, but I do think, like, overall, the women in that match felt like there's a reason to work a little harder and secure your spot in the company and that's where i'll be a positive on this thing but yeah i mean what is she doing why would i care about it at this point yes all that is hard to argue at this point i'll buy i'll like yeah i'll buy in the match like the match was fine i didn't have any part any problem with the match i thought it was a good a good little four-way match it got a decent amount of time i think you're right the women worked pretty hard um it's just yeah i just don't know like where the where you know what the expectations are for her at this point because I mean I think sure she's you know you could make the argument that she elevated uh, you know these women want to want to work extra hard and and get that first match with her so the match was better that's okay I, I I'll buy that but I still think that like ultimately like she is the key she has to be she has to be the one that's hitting home runs when she's out there or doubles at least and. Um, and yeah, and we just, I, and I just think last night was like a, a big detriment to that coming off, you know, two promos where you're kind of like, okay, like it's cool. Like she's, you know, doing her thing, talking, but you know, it's, it's, it's just, I don't know, man, to me, it just feels flat and it feels, I don't, and like, I just don't know that she's fully interested and fully like engaged. That's the, I think that's like the bigger takeaway that I have, which is like, man, like, you, you know, if you're, you know, getting paid the kind of money you're getting paid and kind of having part of the company like on your shoulders, it's like you got to be fully engaged in that. And, you know, yes, last night, it, not the worst thing in the world because it's commentary, as you mentioned correctly. It's not necessarily make or break, but I'm just, I was just watching that going, boy, like they're trying, they're trying to tee Mercedes up for to make a couple points. And she just wasn't like, just wasn't wasn't biting on it and i was just like man what what is happening here um do you so on that on that note then do you like where um like what she's involved with on aw television as far as storylines go and as far as um as far as just who potential opponents might look at i'm going to go to some super chats here in a second um mm -hmm. to kind of uh i know articulate a side of this argument but like where are you on on that yeah i mean i think it's poor i think that that was like a a thing to be worried about when she entered the company is who does she work with how many top tier matches does she have right and all of those that we mm -hmm. talked about she's nowhere near that those people at the moment right and i do we have anyone besides jamie hater Britt? Tony Storm, Thunder Rosa, right? Was that kind of our core people? Yeah, there, the core. Any, yeah, you might be able to get something out of Soraya, maybe, but I don't know. Yeah, I mean, assuming she can work at all, right? Yeah, right. So, um, yeah, I mean, it's kind of slim pickings, and I think to elevate people is the name of the game, as as you know, we've talked about here. So, but where you're starting, you know, her having like a loose. Alliance with Willow taking on Julia Hart and Sky Blue. You know, it's not the worst thing you could do, but it's not the best thing you can do, right? That's just kind of where we are. And, you know, look at the other two big signings. You know, Will Ospreay taking on his fellow teammates, having awesome matches. Certainly on the, to me, Cody Rhodes path of like, you just want to maintain him being over before you pull the trigger on him being champion. So that's been a rousing success. Um, Okada, you know, whether we want him to win a title, he's won a title already. He's aligned with 
a big time group in the elite. So like what he's doing. So she's certainly the bottom. She's third out of three for the new signings and what they're doing, et cetera. And yeah, I would also agree with you that it seems like she is um, not entirely motivated to like make the most of every time she's on television because she's a big star. Right. And we've seen that a lot with signings. Right. I think you could do the inverse with at or not the a correlation with Adam Cole here. Right. Of like, hey, I'm Adam Cole. Whatever I do is going to get over. So it's all good. I don't need any notes. And I'm not saying he's like that. He's probably like a really nice guy. But, you know, there's just that head of the AEW ladder there that is like, hey, go out, do your thing. And what you think is best is probably what's best for you and for us. And just a little bit more structure makes Mercedes what she was in WWE. It makes Cody what he is versus AEW. Right. It's just. That constant refrain, you can see again. And, you know, some people are <clears throat> totally locked in and do whatever's best and have really good instincts. And, you know, you have literally Brian Danielson at the end here. You're going to have good matches. But, you know, we should, in my opinion, we should be seeing Brian Danielson probably every Dynamite in Collision live in the arena if he's able to do it. Uh for his final year within AEW. And like, that is just some, like another thing you're dropping and not doing. So I don't know. It's just that it's the AEW effect that I kind of built into Mercedes. So I guess that's why I'm not as what's up with her because it's kind of going exactly how I would have thought it's going. And she'll probably be champion, probably have a long run. It'll be pretty good. And you just hope that builds the division around her is kind of where I am with her. Yeah, I, don't, I think you're right. I mean, and that's, I think to me, that's disappointing. I think it's disappointing for fans. I think it's just disappointing for the company, too, if that's what you're going to do. I mean, it's one thing, you know, you know, you look back at CM Punk when he came out in the company. Like, clearly, clearly there was a plan there. We're going <laughs> to do this thing with Darby, right? Get you kind of in the mm-hmm. ring, first match back. Right after that, you know, we're going to get into your get into a program with MJF. That's a thing we want to hit. Um, and then you're going to you know, you're going to win the world title after that. Like clearly like that was established as like, this is the path, this is the plan. And part of that I think is because it's, it's punk. And he, I think he, you know, like most top guys, like we talked about on Tuesday, have the kind of like type a of like, I want to know what I'm doing. And then I want to know what I'm doing next. And I want to know what I'm doing after that. And it's got to be like top shelf stuff. And yes, there's inherent problems with that sometimes, but it, it does, at least it, at the very least, it shows an investment that the talent's making. If Mercedes Monet is coming in and is just fine with like, yeah, sure, I'll work with Willow, or yeah, you know, fine, I'll I'll, I'll work with Sky Blue and do that and whatever. It's like you're not only are you not getting the most out of her from a business perspective, like in the ring, but you know she's like too passive in terms of how she should be like used as a star. I think presentation wise, it's still on point. So she gets the the limo treatment when she comes into the building. She looks like a million bucks, of course. Um, and that's that's there. But like you have to have something to grab onto. And when you look at the people that she's in the ring with, like Willow and Sky Blue and Julia Hart, I mean, this is like second or third tier talent in the women's division in in AEW. Um, we'll talk about more of that in a minute, but, but that's where she is. And like, you know, it's been three weeks and like, she's more like merged into the lane of traffic in that company than both Osprey and, and Okada. Like Osprey, you know, I think is, has come in big fanfare and has kind of stayed up, 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 up at the top. But I mean, if, if Mercedes Monet wasn't on that show last night, I don't, I mean, yes, I think you're right to call out the formatting of the show. Like, Big match at the beginning. You got the Mercedes angle and, and all that in the middle. Big match at the end. Fill in between that. Um, but if Mercedes Monet wasn't on that show yesterday, I don't. I mean, I don't think you lose much as far as like the the quality of like the actual show once you put like formatting aside. Um, so, and I just don't think you want that from a star of her level with what she can bring into the table if she's if she's interested. Um, 
interested in doing so, or at least what I think she can do, <laughs> or what we assume she can do uh, from that from that perspective. More on this in a second. Let's set the table here for the show. This is the Brass Stream Media Podcast. It's Thursday, March 28th. So pumped that you're here. We're excited to be here. Hello to everybody who has joined us live in the chat. Sean, Zach, Tracy, and others. Hi, hi, hi. Thank you so much for being here. If you guys are checking out our show and you haven't subscribed to our YouTube channel, do that. Do that right now. Hit subscribe. Hit the notification button so you know when we drop new content and when we are live. Uh, speaking of which, we're live four days a week now. Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, and uh, twice on Thursday, actually. Um, different hosts, different perspectives on shows, um, different opinions, all within the same kind of framework and and under the Brass Ring Media banner of how we talk about pro wrestling. So um, definitely subscribe to our channel if you want some of our written work. We've got show reviews and we've got features um, and other types of written content that drop on our daily uh, newsletter on Substack. You can search Brass Ring Media Substack in your Google machine and uh, find that. Um, it's free to subscribe there and uh, you can get all sorts of daily content right in your email box every single day. Uh, we'd love for you guys to check that out. We also have a membership tier over on Patreon, patreon.com backslash Brass Ring Media. You can go there and become a member. And as a member, you get a free member-only podcast. You get all of our PLE and pay-per-view review shows, uh, full access to the newsletter, um, not just free stuff, but special paid um, written content as well, and um, entry into our Discord community where all the members hang out, talk wrestling, talk not wrestling, and everything in between. So it's $4. That's it, guys. Four bucks uh, gets you access to everything. We'd love to have you. It's a great time to become a member. We have lots of cool content coming up um, uh, during WrestleMania week. Uh, we'll be in, I'll be in Philadelphia for for the for the weekend, and so lots and lots of stuff. Uh, we'd love to have you. Four dollars. Patreon.com backslash Brass Ring Media. Um, our super chats are open, guys. We already got a couple. We're going to get to those here in a quick second. Um, but uh, yeah, helps us keep the show going. Any contribution helps us out a lot. We do appreciate it, and we'll make sure to get to everything um, that's dropped in there before we uh, wrap the show today. Cool, cool. Okay, let's get to let's get to this here. We'll go to Zach first, um, and Zach says I got to push back a little because you made both Willow, you being me, made both Willow and Julia seem like bottom feeders in your report, like they aren't worth worthy of being around Mercedes Monet. Um, the report he's referencing is I write a post dynamite uh, report and review for Substack, our newsletter every uh, every Thursday morning. So you can check that out for free right now uh, by becoming a, a newsletter subscriber. Um, yeah, Zach. So here's the deal. It, it, I, I hope I didn't make them feel like bottom feeders. That was certainly not my intention. My intention was to call out the fact that they're mid carters, like in the in the most real sense of the word. I mean, this isn't like Jade Cargill holding the TBS championship. Like this is Julia Hart, who's, you know, an up and coming mid card talent. This is Willa Nightingale, who has been a talent confined to rampage and, you know, just not a relevant week to week uh, performer in, in AEW at the, at a, at a high level. Um, Sky blue, same thing, like Chris Statlander, same thing. They're all like on that second, third level. And it's not that they're bottom feeders and it's not that they aren't worthy eventually about, about being around Mercedes Monet. But I mean, right now, like I don't understand merging her into the lane of traffic and merging her into the company at that level. When you have Tony Storm there, when you have Soraya there, when you have um, even like a Deanna Perrazzo um, um, there. Hashida is, is there like former world champions that are on the roster. Like, I just don't understand like why you would just choose to put her with folks that for the better part of two years have been treated as just like undercard, you know, jobber fodder in, in a lot of ways. And so not worthy of being around Mercedes Monet sounds like negative. It's more so they just, don't have a business reason to be around Mercedes Monet at this point in time. Like there are a lot of bigger matches that she can have even on, 
you know, a very plateaued women's division. Um, there's other talent that I think she could shine with stronger as this like huge main event free agent signing. And, and I think you lose a lot of that sizzle when you're not working with people at the level you should be. So that's, that's what I meant. Tyler, any comments? No, I think you, I think you got it. And <clears throat> again, it's more the planning of this, right? Like you're, I'm going to presume. Yes. Tony Khan knew Mercedes was coming in. So all these people like, let's, let's think even the ROH, right? Um, it's Athena taking on Sheeta in the pay-per-view, which is what the Friday, that's Friday night of right. the yep. fifth, right? So yep. like, I'd much prefer either of them be Mercedes first matches. Like Thousand I'm sure percent. Athena and Mercedes worked in WWE together. I'm almost sure of that. Right. In oh, some sure, capacity. Yeah, yeah. Had, like if you're a woman on the main roster, you work with everybody basically because it, it's a sh- shorter roster anyway. But um, just like one of those two to be like presented in a way. And I know oh, Athena's got the belt, but you could have dropped that and gotten her over to AEW, presented her the way you presented Deanna, if you don't want to use Deanna, right? And like have her be a viable upper mid card person that takes on as, as a heel, taking on Mercedes as a baby face. And that's her first match. She can attack Mercedes week two, and that's a grudge match, whatever, right? That would be a more coherent story than what we're getting currently. And, like, the stuff with Willow, like, yes, she did injure Mercedes, but they haven't talked about that either, and Mercedes didn't talk about it on commentary. So, like, I don't know what the angle of this story is. Like, even that would be compelling of, like, hey, make sure we hit home. Willow and Mercedes have beef with each other from outside the company, and now they're both in the company. So just, yeah, a lot of missed opportunity and her being aligned with, yeah, your Sky Blues, your Julia Hearts, your um, Anna Jays, right? Your Chris Statlanders. Not great, right? It's Cody or whatever. Who's Kenny goes to WWE tomorrow, let's say, and he's working. There's like a, you know, a four-way match with Chad Gable, Otis, and DIY, right? All four of those guys are fighting, and he gets involved in that, right? With with that, exactly. um, yeah. I guess they showed a video of the match per Zach in the chat here. What I match? don't remember that. The I assume he's the Willow and Mercedes match, but I do not think it's been framed. If you don't know about that, uh, no. or I missed it. No, I mean it's been framed passively. Like it's been framed mm-hmm. at like. You know, I got unfinished business with you, you know, because, you know, I got hurt and I was almost taken out. I mean, I don't I don't remember the video, Zach. Uh, I'm, I'm not doubting you. I just don't remember it. Um, mm-hmm. But like but even still, it's like that, I mean, I don't know. Like that that to me doesn't seem like a story. Like it's like it's wrestling. Of course, you're supposed to hurt the other person. Like that's the yeah. whole idea. Like like that's like a UFC fighter going, man, I really hate this guy because he beat me up. It's like, well, yeah, kind of. That's kind of the whole thing. <laughs> So it's yeah. like, you know, that like that's what you're mad at her about because she beat you up and won a match. Like, I don't know. I think passively at best it's been framed. We're getting a little pushback here in the in the uh, in the super chat. So let's read some of those. Mm-hmm. Um, Zach says literally everyone you listed are already involved in story. Should they blow up whatever story they're telling for Mercedes? Well, that's a false choice because no, they shouldn't do that. But yes, <laughs> you knew that Mercedes was coming in for a long, long time. So don't have those other stories going on because you know that she's going to come in and you're going to do something there. So, so no, I don't necessarily think I'd blow them up. Although, you know, I think at this point, yes, I would because Mercedes is the most important woman star that you have. So yes, I would do everything I could to accommodate her, but really what I would do is not, you know, if, 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 if we wanted to debut Mercedes in a big way, you know, yeah, don't, you don't put Tony storm in another story. You finish the Perazzo match at the last pay-per-view and then you go right into this, you know, something to that end. So I don't know. I don't, I just don't agree with that, with those options there. I just think it's, you know, it's an option that it's, it's something to consider after you've already messed up one time. Yeah. And let's try to be, as not mean as possible. If 800,000 people watched last night, how many care about the stories outside of Mercedes 
with those four women? 80,000 people actually care to get that resolved. I certainly don't care. Um, So it is worth blowing up if you want to, you know, tell a better story as opposed to just like getting involved in that. But I would have her and Tony Storm do something like, does Tony have an opponent right now? For Dynasty, she's not. A, uh, no, nope. Okay, because nope. there's a TBS title match. Like, is she just gonna skip a pay per view? Maybe. I mean, I get. I mean, they still have got like, f- like three weeks, four weeks. Left yeah, to three go. weeks. Yeah. So I mean, there's enough time to like to do something there. I mean, I, I wouldn't be surprised to see her work Diana again. Um, yeah. But, but still, but again, like, okay, you know, you don't have to do that match right now. Like, it's Tony Storm beat her. So that's there you go. Like, yes, that's something that I would blow up if it meant, you know, making sure that Mercedes is in at the highest level possible for sure. Mm -hmm. Um, But really what I would have done is or here's the here's the other thing, man. Like if Willow's the way you want to go, if that's if that's like if you're like, you know what, Mercedes wants that and we want to like, you know, connect their last match together to what she's doing now. Like, okay, that's fine too. But then you don't have Willow like dork around with Stokely Hath- Hathaway for two months. Like yeah. you, at that point, you frame Willow in a major, major way with lots of wins over top, over top stars, like, and treat her as somebody that is eventually worthy of, of facing Mercedes when she does come in. I don't think you just, you just, you know, assume that people know this and do whatever you're going to do and then go, Oh, you know, we need something for Mercedes to do. It's just uh, you gotta you gotta set the table, even if it is Willow, which I would still disagree with. But I would certainly have a different opinion if, for the last two months, Willow was you know framed up in a totally different different way than she was. Yeah, I mean, just look at the Eddie Kingston parallel, right? He was yeah. put very high on a pedestal to then be Okada's first singles opponent. Not that. I would definitely not think yes. that he won that tournament knowing that Okada was going to come in in March and beat him, right? But he's someone who was a mid-card fan favorite, built up, won titles, and, you know, lost to Okada to build and per- to show Okada to everyone who hasn't seen him that this guy is legit. This guy beats people. He beats champions his first try. You know, to do the same with Mercedes, if Willow would have won the TBS title, it's not like Julia Hart's doing a ton with that thing anyway, right? And that's not even a shot on Julia Hart. Right. Like, how often do you see her on television? So, you know, Willow could have had that thing for two months, and I don't even want Mercedes to win it, right? So, whatever. She could be in a feud with Julia Hart, and that belt's not involved and elevated herself. Or had lost it to Julia Hart, you know, two weeks before Mercedes showed up. So, you know, Mercedes – or, you know, Willow is the top person. So, there's just a lot you can play in out here if you want this to happen that has not been done. Literally, it's the stories that were there, and she's just entering in. I just think Tony, I've always thought this just doesn't care really about women's division. He'll occasionally get yeah. peak in interest. Um, he likes, yeah. you know, he likes Riho and he likes Sheeta to have like some fun stories, but then he gets bored of that. And then it's whoever's booking it. Uh, he's he's there passively, giving the thumbs up on stuff is what it seems like. So just another example of that happening again. Yeah, and I. I guess too, like, I guess, and maybe this is just a fundamental thing, but like, you know, not, you can't have all your top stars just interested in like elevating stars. Sometimes you just need them to come in and work the top stars, like work the other top stars, you know, it's like, you know, um, trying to think of a good example, but like, you know, at some point, Becky Lynch, right? Like, she's she's done it like she's had her run at the top you know and she's still a big star but it's not like her putting over other stars and working with younger talent you know if that's where they go with this and they've already done it in Mm -hmm. a lot of areas like it makes sense because you know she's already like done business with with pretty much everybody you know Mm -hmm. like you know Mercedes hasn't in AEW. Like she's she's she needs to deliver now for that company. Like she's a top star now in her own right. And so it's like, you know, you wouldn't have you wouldn't have wanted like at the height of the attitude era, you know, Steve Austin to work with some 
like up and coming person just to try to elevate them. Like, no, like he's got to be working with the undertaker. He's got to be working with rock and triple H and make full, like, you know, like, because that's where the money is. That's how you, that's how you, you know, uh, you know, earn for, earn for the company. So, you know, I, I think that's kind of where I'm at on her too. It's like, that can't just be what you do. You have to actually like have a run at, at the top. So we'll see what happens. I, uh, Tracy uh, is jumping in here with a super chat too. Thank you, Tracy. Um, it says, I doubt non WWE watchers such as myself would think Mercedes Monet was a huge star. If just seen the last few weeks, first impressions are not overwhelming. And I think like that's, Leave it to Tracy. That's my overarching point. I think Tracy summed up there in a nice sentence. Nice two sentences. Like, first impressions mean a lot. They, you know, there's only a handful of people out there that, you know, really know Mercedes Monet that are watching AW right now, you know? And so it's, or I take that back. There are, like, you just, you need to have, more than your notoriety when you're like debuting with a company like this. And so, you know, her first impression right now is, oh, she can't really talk and she hasn't really wrestled. Looks great. Great presentation. I know she should be a big star, but I don't really know why. And that I think is what is one thing that, that AEW is going to want to fix. Tyler, what do you think about that first impression wise? Yeah, I agree. I was doing some research while you were, um, talking here because i have an idea of what's happening here a little bit with not just mercedes but um go 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 baby go yeah so the she certainly seemed like a big star in boston right hometown yeah people chanting ceo right they last week they were in toronto and yep, yep. what what did she what did she do did she have another promo she just had the that first promo backstage. In the of the room. Yeah. And, and, yeah. and backstage yeah. thing. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and then this week. So uh different venues, right? Quebec City at the center Videotron. Um a center okay. Videotron is what the place is called where they were last night. Is not quite T V Garden. And I do <laughs> think that some of the Mercedes stuff was probably like so here's my point here, right? On Osprey, I thought some of the camera work last night, and I know I'm going off course here, but it'll come back around. Was like really good and really bad, right? Like I think some of the Osprey framing when he came out was really good because it didn't show how few people were in that arena. And then the camera work was horrible in the Young Bucks match. That every sort of oh crap, Matt's gonna break this up, and you see him on the apron, and they cut to the tight angle, like you don't know what's gonna happen, right? I that was like mm-hmm. some of the worst um, directing I've seen in a long time, but. Like a guy like Osprey, a guy like Okada, are used to working buildings like this, maybe even smaller buildings. So this still feels like a way, and they're embracing it and happy and excited to be over here. And Mercedes, Danielson, CM Punk, right? Like they're going to these smaller buildings that they've worked huge arenas, and they're probably like, "Oh no, what's going on?" Edge, right? You can tell there's just like a slight disconnect. Yeah, Yeah, there's like a slight disconnect on, like, oh man what we're doing like a house show arena for for tv right so i do think there's some of that with a lot of these big wwe stars that come over christian had that at first and he kind of figured out what his character was going to be and how to embrace that and get over right so it all takes that that the effort there and i do think that without the hometown base without the ceo and title but even she came out last night right like the crowd was not chanting ceo uh maybe maybe one little chant there but so you watch that, yes. It's it's not um, that star making character that I thought we saw in Boston, and you know that's a combination of everything we're talking about. Plus, probably her being like, "What is this place we are at?" And look at right. there's two thousand people here. Like I'm making my money, but oof, I'm gonna save some good stuff for later or something, right? I'm not saying that's what happened, but that's the feeling I get with not just Mercedes, but lots of big time talent coming over from. WWE, right? Like Adam Cole's working in NXT. So this is an upgrade for him. All the NXT people swerve. You know, this is still bigger for all those people, but you know, it's just one of those things. So I'm sorry if I did not 
example, 4,200 was the attendance. So there you go. So, you know, not to like compare and contrast, but where you were at Monday was 15,000 people, right? So right. that's got to be a pretty big disconnect. Even when Mercedes is near the end, they're probably doing at least eight, 9,000 people um, per every SmackDown and Raw that she was a part of. So, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that's actually a really good point, and 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 to your and to what you said too. Look, it's this is not like when I asked that question, "What's up with Mercedes Monet in AEW?" It's not necessarily doom and gloom. It's just like wondering, like what, like what's the pl- like what was the plan here? Like this can't this can't be like or like I mean, it clearly is the plan, but it's like you know, I think it's safe to call out both notions one being there's plenty of time left like she's this is not like she's not beholden to this spot and this reaction forever you know she as you said can figure it out and like like figure out the character and just figure out the environment the fans all that stuff that all but (laughs) i think at the same time you can call out though like you know that type of thing can you can click quicker if you've you know have better plans in place than what she has right now than two promos in the ring that were pretty much exactly the same and then a night on commentary for a fatal four-way in the middle of the card like you know i you know that's uh to trade to tracy's point that just doesn't scream great 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 first impression um and so we'll see we'll see what happens she's not going to be on the pay-per-view or i guess she might be in a in a triple a triple threat, I guess, is 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 in the cards, uh, perhaps. Um, Zach, come, thank you, Tracy. Zach jumps in and talks about that. I fortunately think it's going to be a triple threat with her, Julia, and Willow. Not my ideal choice, but it is what it is. Yeah, what do you think about that, Tyler? The idea of a triple threat for her first her first match for the TBS championship. Like, goodness, yeah. this, this isn't helping my argument or anybody else's argument against mine. Yeah, the only good thing there is that you could – she could – lose and it not be her fault so she does not have to bring up the tbs title and like you know she does not need that thing at all it does not need elevated it's fine where it is a julia hart a chris statlander right. per- perfect there's tons of mid-card talent in the women's division that that thing can cycle back and forth through right if you want nyla rose to be the nijax equivalent right have her win that thing and then she's yeah. the gatekeeper to move up after winning that, right? Have Sheeta win that thing and go on a run like she did with the world title and make it mean something, right? But any woman Mercedes um, needs that thing. So that would be the glass half full um, argument there. But yeah, I would avoid that like the plague. And she needs to be wrestling somebody one-on-one. doesn't have to be for a title. I know you have 10,000 in the company, but the – the most hype match I, the most ma- the match I'm most hyped for match wise, is not for a title at this show. It's it's mm-hmm. you know Osprey and Danielson. It's gonna be awesome, and oh, yeah. like you can have a pay per view with seven matches, and three can be not for titles. They can be grudge matches, and those are some of the best matches ever. The mm-hmm. the CM Punk and MJF thing was not for a title, so you know yep. it's just about like you not liking somebody you want to talk about it a little bit more and why, you know, Willow put you on the shelf for nine months or whatever, and you want to get some revenge and you beat her. Great story. Great start to the company. Let's do it. Let's re- reset and start that next week. We can have, you know, Chris Allen or take on Julia Hart because she's friends with Willow. And then that's how you finish that story. Like not, right. not hard. Yeah. And, and yeah, exactly. Like, I, I mean, the TBS championship and a triple threat, it's like, I mean, she's got to, I think she has to, like, it's a, it's a really bad situation booking wise for her because you either book her to yep. win and she's the TBS champion or you book her to lose and she's losing her first match. Like I get as a triple threat, but it's still not, that's still not like just no way. Like, I, I mean, I think it's better for her to wrestle somebody like Serena Deeb and just have a really good match for 10 minutes, mm-hmm. beat her. And that, and like, that is better than, you know, her in this triple threat. So I hope, uh, Hope they don't go that way, but it does look like it does look like uh, it, it is going. It is going to go. Yeah, it's going to go or, that way. I don't, I don't like love. even the, the thing earlier, like have Mercedes show up to because um, they're in. Where, where's the show? Where's the ROH show? 
It's got to be in Philly, right? Phil, oh, yeah. It's in Philly. It's like right outside it's of... Like, uh, is it the ECW Arena or somewhere else? No, it's, a bigger no, arena. it's, it's, it's where Temple. It's where Temple plays. I think they've run shows yes. there yes. in the past. Um, yep. Like, have Mercedes show up and Athena can lose to Sheeta or vice versa. And Mercedes gets in the grill or she's at ringside. Maybe Athena slaps her during the match. Whatever. And just be like, oh, this is A, a reason that you should watch Ring of Honor pay-per-views because crazy stuff can happen. Our huge stars can show up and interact with other stars and it can set up a match like that a heel you know she could be the roh champion and it's not for the title that's done lots of times and have mercedes beat her like roh is already the roh champion tag team champions lost in the quarterfinals of a tag team tournament which is the dumbest thing ever but i don't know if we're going to get to it but like you're already debasing all those titles every step of the way so just have Athena yeah. lose to Mercedes in a non-title match on a pay-per-view. Fans will see Athena for the first time in a year if they don't watch ROH. And it'll all be fine and dandy. Let's let's pivot right now. I'll do the change.org petition, and we'll have everyone start signing that because we need better stuff going on here for, for Mercedes. We do. We do. Um, all right, a couple more Super Chats on this, and then we're going to pivot topics. Uh, Zach calling out, well, has been on a bit of a roll, okay? Appreciate this. Zach. Zach says, in Willow's defense, she's been all over the three shows for the last two months, and I don't think she's taken a single pin. Fair. And I'm not going to look it up on Cage Match. I trust you. But nobody knows that. Like, it's, Willow's not, like, framed in that way. She's not talked about in that way. She's not positioned that way. She's been positioned as, I might cheat, I might not, and I might go with Stokely Hathaway. Like, that's that's where she's been. And so, like, if you have her on this great run, okay, talk about that. Make that a central part, like, of of how she's presented. So I I buy what you're selling to a point, but if you don't emphasize it, it's like it's like those guys who used to wrestle on AEW Dark who were like fifty and one, and then they got a title match and you're supposed to take it seriously. It's like no, like no, it doesn't work that way. Yeah, Tyler, well, it's like, I mean, like on the show. Like the match between Dustin and the Butcher, like honestly, like <laughs> has better build than any Willow matches had the last three weeks, right? Like I love her to speak, to be able to speak on the microphone and present herself as a character. Like she can do it, and um, just build up. Like, hey, I've won three matches in a row. Uh, I want to take on Julia Hart for that TBS. Whatever, like. The, the thing between Butcher and Dustin was like totally nothing. And it was great comparison to this. Yep. So there's just like, and like yeah, commentaries are talking about her winning. Um, yeah. So yeah. there's just no way to, you know, besides Orange Cassidy, like you are not over in AW unless you talk on the microphone and given that opportunity to do so. Um, you know, like Malachi Black doesn't talk and he's not over right now. House of Black is not over because they're not on TV, right? You need to be on TV. You need to be involved every week and talk and wrestle and do everything you're supposed to do. That's not a shot at the wrestlers. It's a shot at the formatting of the wrestlers to get them over. Bingo. Yeah, couldn't have, couldn't said it better myself. On other rapid fire topics here, we've got Adam. Uh, thanks, for Adam, and thank you, Zach, for those uh, super chats. Appreciate it. Adam says she Mercedes looks the part, and they have Pavlovian CEO song. But then she talked and talked and talked. Yeah, like th- remember, like Mercedes Monet, Sasha Banks. I mean, she's never been a strong mic worker. That's not that just has not been her strong suit. Her strong suit is great matches and a top star presence, is what I would say in that order. Um, and so they've leaned into one of those two things, but the other, like, wow, I mean, you're, you're kind of setting her up to, to fail in that regard. And Zach jumps in on the same topic and says, if anyone ever needed to go straight to wrestling and not talk, it's Mercedes. And yeah, that, <laughs> I would, I would agree with that. I think you can get away with it one night, but then you gotta, you know, you know, uh, Will Ospreay got to go out there and, you know, <laughs> uh, show what he could do. And, uh, that was supremely important. I think a key reason why he's, you know, as over as he is uh, right now, more to come, more to come on that topic guys. Um, but let's pivot Tyler. Let's pivot to a different um, AEW topic last night. It's, it's a guy we've been uh, kind of talking about a lot on this show recently. 
solidified his shot at a world title. Swerve Strickland um, beats Kanosuke Takeshita in the main event, earns his uh, one-on-one match with Samoa Joe at the Dynasty pay-per-view. Um, Tyler, I thought this was well done. I thought this was well done uh, pretty much the whole show. I thought they, you know, they produced some really nice kind of video work that framed up um, not so much the rivalry between Takeshita and Swerve, but what was on the line, you know, how the world title impacts Takeshita, how it impacts Swerve. They're both going after it. So I thought it helped frame the main event. It helped frame the stakes. It made the world title look like a big deal. They had a, then they had a great match um, that I wish they wouldn't have shook hands for at the beginning, but that's side sidebar. And um, Swerve won. Swerve wins clean, and now he's off to face Joe. So I – I really like this. I thought they really, they treated it like a main event. They gave it, um, you know, the juice that it, that it needed uh, to like stand on its own in that slot. And then of mm-hmm. course, you know, the two of them delivered, which I thought, you know, obviously I, there was no reason to think that they wouldn't. So this gets a big thumbs up for me. I like what they're, what they're doing here with, uh, with Swerve. How, what did you think? Yeah, I agree. I liked it a lot too. I liked the, you know, what top of the show, middle of the show, there was lots of, reminders of your main event why it's mm-hmm. important um so that was good to steal your yep. gimmick um in the ring the psychology like this is this was swerve sort of really working babyface you know big time long match for the first time um yeah. in a singles match and i think it, he did a great job selling that shoulder and you know having the moment where you can't hit a move um you know was the match a little on the choreograph side, probably. I think you would agree with that as well. Near the end, Tony saying it was a five star match is the only reason I bring that up because, like, you know, that was a solid yeah. three and three quarter star match. Um, but, which is great for a TV match, right? With a yeah, TV. That doesn't mean there. it's not a good match, right? Yeah, yeah it was an awesome match. Um, so that was, I liked all that. And that's good promise for Swerve as a character to be able to work like that. That's the way he's got to work against Joe to make that match compelling. The near falls, like, that was. Not a template because obviously Joe's not going to work the same match to Kesha did, but there's a lot of the structure of that match you can use in that title match and make it super compelling. Have the you know WrestleMania classic where both guys kick out of two near falls and then you don't know what's going to happen, I think is a recipe for this match at Dynasty. And I also loved the Joe's promo at the very end. Um, yes, and yes. you know, looking at the TV correctly, cutting away from the TV, you know, Renee who was the MVP last night. I think she did a great job as always, but she was all over the place and I liked the way she was used too. Um, but, you know, him being intense saying next week, you're going to, you know, you know, we're going to sign, you're going to see how you messed up. Like such a good heel, this version of Joe to be like, you know, to play jujitsu and be like, Hey, you think you're happy. You just made the worst decision of your life. And like, you know, that's such like a, guy you don't mess with at the bar vibe and that's so much Samoa yeah. Joe. So it was all great and I'm very excited. That that's my number two easily for this pay-per-view. I mean it's it's Osprey, Danielson, and this match are making the pay-per-view a must buy for me. Obviously we watch all of them, but if I was a casual fan or if I was just a regular fan, I'd be buying for those two matches. Everything else is kind of okay. We'll see where it goes. But I think they're doing a great job with both those matches. Um at this point. Yeah, I think so too. And what did you think of how like they talked about Swerve on, on commentary? Because, you know, I, I was just trying to look at, look at and listen to, you know, how they're positioning him ahead of this title match. And like, to me, the way they talked about him, like, you know, finally getting his shot, his one-on-one shot, they reiterated that a couple times. Like, maybe think that they're going to go ahead and like pull pull a switch here and get that and get the belt on and get the belt on swerve just just on how they're like kind of talking about it as like near or at the end of like swerves journey you know he, he had those matches with page and then he didn't get his one-on-one title shot and he lost that triple threat and now he earned this again and he's going to go out like it just seemed to me that like they're really kind of setting the table for that um did you may, have any takeaways from how they talked about him, especially at the end, and especially how, as you mentioned, Joe's promo, I thought played into that as well. 
Yeah, and you cut off a little bit. Are you saying you're worried they're going to do the unlikely thing and keep it on Joe and kind of end this story with Swerve? Is that what you were saying? No, I don't know. Uh, I'm, I'm not worried either way. It's just, okay. I, I, to me, I look at it and go, I think they're they're setting the table for a title switch. So, you know, yes, that could mean that they're not going to do it, but they're really, they're talking about the Swerve, like, journey more so yeah. than I than I, than, you, than I would if you weren't gonna um the story yeah if you weren't gonna sw- like switch the title like they're putting a lot yeah. on the line for him which is good it's more than yeah. they did for the Adam Page story beating Kenny you know it was all yes. there and I can barely remember it being talked about in this way right so that's a good improvement as well on this is our baby face everyone loves he's on a journey and he can complete that journey to the top be the first black champion you know world champion in men's world champion in AEW. So like he's made that ambitious statement too from forever ago. So that story would be completed as well. So yeah, it, it seems in all likelihood that's the way to go. And, you know, I haven't looked at any odds or anything, but that's what they're setting up. And AEW is usually pretty on the nose with that sort of storytelling. So I'm going to think that's going to continue a trend and we're going to get, you know, the summer of, of swerve at top at the top and, that's where it is. One clarification. I said I gave that like a three and three quarters star match. Um, the main event. I think Zach I think I said thought I said lower than that. So I just want to clarify. Yes. I think that's I do mumble. So that's fine. Should, a five stars, like come on, like guys, that was not a five star match. Like it wasn't even yeah. I don't even think it was designed to be one. Like it just no. didn't have it's a TV match. Like, it's it's like impossible for a TV match, unless you're like the you know. Uh, Page and uh, Danielson match, so right, exactly. At, uh, yeah, at uh, Grand Slam, so yeah, for sure. So we'll see. Yeah, but this is gonna be fun. It's gonna be fun. Uh, I'm glad they have the top of the card like ironed out like this. Like it, it, it's you know, you know that those guys are your top guys. I think that's so important and a big reason why I think these shows have been better lately. Um, so. Excited to see what they do. Excited for like some promo work from Swerve and Joe now, like in the next few weeks. That's going to be really, really uh, fun to watch. So there's a lot there. Um, also on this show, Tyler, you mentioned it. Uh, Undisputed Kingdom losing to Best Friends in the tag title or the the the, the open, the vacant tag title tournament. Um, that I mean. I don't know what there is to say at this point about that, about that faction. Like it's, whew, I mean, if they can't win a match like that and you don't care to put them over in a match like that, like it's, 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 de- it's, it's just, it's just dead. It's just, it's just dead. And, and I don't even know that there's any sense in really fixing it at this point. Like they didn't even reference the Wardlow thing. Like, Adam Cole calls out Wardlow in this promo last week and Wardlow's not even on the show this week to kind of either answer him or rebut him or, or do his bidding and help the other team win their matches, which is what Cole said last week. And this week yeah. he's not even involved in the damn thing. So it's like, I, I mean, I, I, I think I give this more analysis than I should given just how the group's treated at this point, but I do it because Adam Cole, you'd think is a big star in this company. Um, but man, I mean, this thing is like off the rails. I mean, is it even worth talking about? I mean, it's that it's so far off the purview of Tony Khan that I don't even know that it's worth bringing up, even though I think it is yeah. because of Cole's involvement. <laughs> yeah, I think it is because of like, what you laid out there. I do think also my, my theory of how to save this from a couple weeks ago, if you remember what that is, it was basically for Cole to, ditch all these guys and get new recruits to like re-energize the group. Right. seems like we're on that track. I don't know if that was on purpose to start with, but that is like Tony Khan is quiet quitting the undisputed kingdom. That is, that is a fact. Uh, And we are seeing Mm -hmm. that in real time. And what (laughs) looks like is happening is Roddy, I think will remain a member, still a champion, still put over relatively strong for his role. Kyle O'Reilly getting a promo last night. We're going to see him in action. Dynamite next week, I think. Or is it uh, Collision? I can't remember I what he said. I think it's Collision, I want to say. Someone okay. check us out in the chat. So so no one will watch it then, so that's a shame. But um, 
and uh, <laughs> just being honest, um, tell me what I'm telling lies. And uh, um, so he seems to be like presented in a way he'll probably get some wins, be put over the way we want, like a willow to be put over, right? That mm-hmm. would track for him to maybe rejoin Cole. So you have Cole Roddy and uh, Kyle O'Reilly, and then probably yep. one or two other high level people. And you get rid of Wardlow, you get rid of, you know, Taven and Bennett. And then you have something actually going here. And, and Cole can look like, you know, a horrible bastard in, you know, screwing his former friends over in those three, where. O'Reilly and Roddy and somebody else can attack all three of those guys because Cole did the bidding. He will have then turn on MJF and then now these friends. And that is what you can expect from him as his character is that he will turn on anyone to get what he wants. Good story. If he can wrestle, then that's like, you know, a good heel to go against Swerve or Osprey. It'd be a great non title match, Cole and Osprey. All that stuff would be a good way to revitalize Cole and that character. So there's a lot to do here. I just like have no idea if maybe I've thought about this more than Tony Khan has at this point. That's that's my concern. It seems. I mean, I mean, like I said, I don't know how you have Adam Cole cut that promo last week about Wardlow and how he better help out the, the group only for him the very next week to not like. Yeah, it's like I mean, it gives him a just, reason to to attack Wardlow, right? That that would be the reason to do it. But yeah, I guess I sh- yeah, sure. I guess if, if they're gonna yeah if they're gonna do that, okay. Um, yeah, D D O A D O A at this yeah. point. Um, okay, a um, couple uh, or really one major uh, AW news quick hit here, and then we're gonna wrap up and we're gonna go and uh, record the member only show for all of our wonderful Brass Ring Media members. But Tony Khan and Eric Bischoff are at it again. Uh, Tyler, did you see their back and forth on Twitter? I did not, thankfully. I was off Squared Circle last night. I'm very rarely on Twitter anymore, so. What, he owes him money or something? Is that what this is about? <laughs> no. Oh, no, 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 no. So what happened was, I'm going to try to find the uh, the exact quote, but basically what happened was um, a certain reporter last night um, made a post about how the, the Strictly Business podcast with, um, uh, with, uh, with Eric Bischoff is going on hiatus, not going not gonna to be a thing anymore. Not even, not the even high. Conrad. No, 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 the one with Somebody John. Else. The one with John. Oh, yeah. Okay. Um, and so John announced that hey, it's uh, it's uh, it's over. The podcast is going to happen. Really nice post from John. You know, really nice post yep. about just doing different things. And Eric's got a big plate, and that's it. You know, and so we're going to wrap it up. Mm-hmm. And this week's going to be the last one. Tony Khan felt the need to respond to that. And if by my math is correct, it's about at about three in the morning last night, or I guess this morning. Yeah, and um, it was East he, time. Responded, he was in Quebec, so it's Eastern Standard Time. Unless he flew back to Jacksonville, I don't know. Maybe. Sorry. Go ahead. Maybe. The tweet says two fifty eight a.m. So, you know, I guess that's it. Yeah. Pri- oh. He's probably on the private jet back to Jacksonville. If I'm being, if I'm guessing what's happening here. Yeah, that makes sense. And his and his. Uh, his uh, th- his response directly to the to the tweet is sunsetting this fraud of a business podcast before the next AW media deal is a wise choice. So, <laughs> so two que- well, I already know the answer to this question, so I'll just answer it myself. The first one was going to be I literally have it written down here, and I don't know why I even have it written down because I know the answer. And then the question was, should Tony Khan be like engaging in this type of activity? So, no, I'm going to answer that for you. But he's flexing his muscle a little bit here. Like that's a flex and makes me think that like, you know, he's either like foolishly flexing and he doesn't have like a contract or, or doesn't know he's going to get a contract that he wants or he like so he's got a pretty good deal signed and he you know and he wants to uh use that news to put a backhand comment to like a few thousand people that are going to see it on uh on social media i thought i thought this was bad form because first of all you never know what's going to happen with with your tv deals and clearly it's not signed sealed yet because they haven't announced it um 
and just a bad way to flex, I think. You know, it's one thing to go back and forth with like cutesy little burns and things like that. I think that's not smart of him to do either, but you know, okay, that's one thing. But like using like the this like the one of the most important business metrics for your company to like take down Eric Bischoff of all people. Like, what are you doing, TK? What do you th- what do you make of this, Tyler? Yeah, even the mindset is so is 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 what he's saying like good time it's a good time to end your show because you won't have to talk about how awesome my upcoming tv deal is and you will be forced to praise me so better for you to end your show than praise me is that what he's like getting at because it's a very convoluted like it's a confusing tweet in in what he's saying of like like do you read it any other way or is that how you read it does that make sense i didn't read it that way i read it as because well, I mean, now now I am kind of reading it that way, but the way that I read it was, at first was, you know, Eric, you've been talking, like, very negatively about what the next TV deal is going to be. And so if you had a show, you'd have to eat some crow a little bit. Yeah. Because it, we're saying the same good. thing. So same same yeah, thing, but just in a different way. Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. So that's super weird. Yeah. That weird. Is like, weird, man. I mean, man, I mean, I don't want to be – whatever but like that's something you say to like a close personal friend as like hey this deal is gonna be awesome f eric bischoff it's like he doesn't have anyone <laughs> to say that to. like and i'm no, not trying to no. be like i feel like a bad about that saying it even but that's like kind of what this seems like to me like i don't know hmm. i hope that's not the case i hope tony has friends um but that he doesn't pay that aren't in his employees right because like friends or not employees, but yeah. um, so yeah, I don't know. It, it is poor form, and you know, I guess and Tony's the king of spin too on a lot of this stuff. So even if they got like a one dollar deal for the next TV deal, he's like, Oh, it's one dollar more than Eric Bischoff ever got as a TV deal for WCW because they were owned by the television company that you know they were owned by Warner and it was right. on Warner's channel. Um, so, or Ted Turner's channel, so I should mm-hmm. say it's on Turner, not Warner, whatever. Now it's Warner, but like, so yeah, stay off. Like, you're not helping yourself. Um, you're only there for you know the people that are gonna cheer you no matter what, and you're not gaining any more people. You know, Tony's PR, uh, is a lagging indicator of AEW's um, <laughs> viewership. Like he's not really doing much to get people on his side consistently, and it doesn't seem like the show is doing a lot to gain new viewers as well. So I think that um, definitely correlates. And it's also Eric Bischoff. Like, come on, yeah. Nobody cares as much about Eric Bischoff as Tony Khan does on Twitter. Like it's it's yeah, it's crazy. And like it's crazy when Bischoff like, dies. I mean, I'm not, let's say a hundred years from now when Eric Bischoff dies, like Tony Khan's going to have a 10 bell salute to him as like a legend of the industry and a pioneer and like yeah. someone that proved that you could go up against the big, the big boys and compete. Like yeah. there's going to be a whole night. Del- so like, I don't know, like that's going to seem disingenuous, even if he actually thinks of it at the time to do stuff like this makes, it's just a bad call for well, that yeah. as an example. And now he better be like announcing a deal sometime soon. I mean, he put it out there. Like, yeah. You know, so we'll see. Stay off Twitter, Tony Khan. Stay off Twitter. A um, couple of last two super chats here. One from Zach. This is hilarious. To cast us forearm shots. That's the super chat. Yeah, those yeah. things were nuts yesterday, man. Those things were yeah. just caved in my esophagus. Uh, and then uh, from Adam here, no, Tyler, no doubt you have thought about it more than TK. <laughs> Yeah, I think that's the case. I have two, so you're not alone, uh, man. Wow. All right, guys. Well, we're gonna we'll wrap it up there. Um, thanks so much for tuning in and listening. Fun hour. Um, we'll be back live tonight with Nocturnal Knockout. Robert Vajos has a really special show planned um, on WWE drafts uh, and also, um, of course, mm-hmm. WrestleMania hype. Last night's Dynamite. So definitely check it out. His shows have been a blast. There's some. He's doing some really cool production work in those shows live. 
So I highly encourage you guys to check that out. Do that by subscribing to our channel here on YouTube. Hit the notification button so you know when we're live. You can also catch all of our live shows as podcasts after the fact. Um, you can uh, find them wherever you get your podcasts. We're still ironing out the issue with Apple. Um, hopefully we'll figure that out by the end of the weekend. But everywhere else you can get it. Um, so if you want to take us to the gym or on the road or to work or what have you, you can do that. Um, and of course, you know, become a Brass Ring Media member. Give us a shot. Give us a chance to earn your business. Uh, Brass Ring Media on Patreon, patreon.com backslash Brass Ring Media. To everybody who super chatted, thank you. To everybody who listened live, thank you. Tyler, thank you, man. We'll catch you uh, here on the member show in a little bit. Cool. Thank you. See you, everybody. Bye, guys.